time when we need certain guns. So the guns we need are pump shotgun, 12 gauge pump shotgun, or automatic shotgun. Nothing else. Don't, nothing else. If you, if you feel like you'd like to give us something and it's not on the list, save it. We've got to have these precise ones because this is what they use against us. And as a weapons expert from the Army, I know what will be best. The next thing we need are 357 Magnum revolvers. That's the main weapon. Not 38. 38 will bounce off of windows. They've been known to. 357. 45 automatic are the best. That's what I personally carry. The next thing we need, if you don't have them, Tom Collins knows where you can get them for half price and, and we need them, are Colt AR-15. That's the civilian name for the M16 rifle. That's what they hit us with most of the time. Or the Mini-14. It's all right. It's not great. We need these weapons very badly. And if you have never been in a firefight, I have stood on a farm in Ohio that was a retreat, and for four solid hours, we never did find out why the police didn't come out, there were over 6,000 rounds expired from both sides trying to kill people. That was one firefight. This is no game, and this is no joke. I spent Monday in the hospital because I wasn't careful at a job that I was having, and somehow, somebody, I got the blood test to prove it, slipped poison in the pop that I was drinking, and I was in critical condition. And I uh, still got the scar from the IV. I went into convulsions and seizures, and uh, a lot of people prayed. And Monday morning, I walked out of that hospital. I looked sick for a few days, but I walked out of that hospital because I got careless. It was a new way they had tried, and I wasn't ready for it. From now on, we're going to watch all ways. So please, this is an unusual request, but if you have them, we need them, okay? And the other thing we need, we need material so that clothes can be made. We need a uh, concrete block. We need cement. We need hundreds of two-by-fours, okay? We need bob wire fencing. We need fence posts. We need electrical wire. You can imagine anything in construction. We need lots of sheetrock. So anything that you can, you feel that you write, if you're in a construction field, you have nails. You can imagine how many nails we need. And we need this stuff, okay? We need farm tools like shovels, picks, and so on. We need everything under the sun. It is a retreat that is a ranch. We need farm animals. If you've got a horse and the Lord might lead you to donate the horse, we need horses more than we need anything else, okay? And that's pretty well it. You can just Pray about it and see how the Lord will lead you. If you feel like donating money, bring it to the pasture, okay? The land is there. All we got to do is get the things built. And I know people around here like Sean and others will be glad on weekends to come up and hang sheetrock with the rest of us. <laughs> I won't be here, I'm sorry to say, so I'm trusting others. Johnny, I'll take care okay, one more thing very quickly for our Sunday School records. But all those people who are not here during first session, please uh, raise your hands. Or if you are not counted in the first, in your second session class already, if you are not in first session or not counted in your second session class, please raise your hand. If you're a visitor who is here and you're not in the first session, your first session, raise your hand. If you're not counted in your second session, and Mike, you get those, lay on those sides. Keep your hands up. Johnny, go ahead and talk. <laughs> well, I was going to ask questions, but I don't think I can ask questions with everybody's hands in the air. So I'll, I'll add very quickly here. We have tried retreat several times. They've always failed because we allowed the supporting churches to have a voice in the retreat itself. Now, I love this church and I'm a member of it or I wouldn't, I've never joined the church in the five years I've been saved. And that's what I think of this church. I think of this pastor. But the retreat, the workers, if you think that you would like to be a worker at the retreat, <clears throat> just remember, <laughs> it's going to be on the hip the whole time you're there. Tom Collins, I told him and his wife, um, they were out looking at the land with us. And uh, this cold already knows who gave us the land. Tom gave us the land. And uh, I told him and his wife, I said, you know, when you come out here, this is your land, but the moment you come through the gate, you put it on your hip. And so pray for us. Pray while we're eating. We're claiming souls upon souls. I'm going to be talking with the people who train me in witchcraft. I'm going to be going in to the top people that sit on the council, the 13 people, 
that sit on the council, I will be in space for eight of them live. And I expect them to attend the meeting. Okay? Pray for us. We're going to believe miracles are going to be done. Baltimore is the closest I'm going to get to Jimmy Carter, but, uh, you know, for those that haven't heard, Jimmy's great evangelistic center, sister won Larry Flint to the Lord, but she told Larry that he could keep on publishing Hustler. He just had to add nude men pictures along with the women to balance it out. That was the Christian principle. I wonder what Lord she's serving. Any questions? Yeah. Go ahead. Tell, he's going to repeat it for the tape. The question is, what about Charles Manson? Was he demon-possessed? Also about the book and everything. All right. Manson belonged to, uh, I had to belong to many brotherhoods, okay? Manson, the brotherhood that he belonged to is called the Process. It's the only brotherhood I worry about. They are so radical that in order to kill me, they would gladly give their own life up right in a meeting. They were run out of England for human sacrifice. They have the inner and the outer process. The outer process is a good group. They have free coffee houses, free clothing, free priests to live, and so on. The inner practice human sacrifice. They teach four God systems. Yahweh as the evil God, Lucifer as the good God, Jesus as one being punished because he spoke against Satan, and Satan as the earthly God. And uh, they wear a cross, big silver cross, with a serpent engraved on the cross showing that Satan and Christ are one through the cross. They were rolled up. They were a contract. He was paid to do it. Kate was breaking away. Her husband knew about it. Her husband went over to establish an alibi in Europe. The money came down. $50,000 came down from Toronto through New Orleans, and poor Manson only got 2000 of it by the time it went through all the sticky fingers. But that's what the Tate killings were about. The others just happened to be there. She wanted out, and you don't get out unless you come through Christ. And she didn't think about trying that. And her mistake was she warned him in advance. She was arguing with her. She was having a baby, and she didn't want the baby raised up in it, and she wanted out. And if you remember the trial script from the book, that's the one thing she begged. She says, not, you know, she kept repeating over and over, don't kill me, don't kill my baby. Her baby was what she cared about. And that's the information that I have on it. I belong to the New Orleans branch, and he was called a field disciple or an evangelist from the New Orleans branch. The process. They were the people who first tried to kill me. The first incident that ever happened happened from them. They're very, very radical. They're located, and they've got a few scattered uh, undercover groups in L.A., but they've got an open chapter in Frisco. Any other questions? Yeah. Are, are epileptics demon-possessed? I'm glad you asked that. When I was saved, and I've got the veteran records to prove it, I was an epileptic or wounded numb. I took an EEG this time last year. The brain scan shows I'm still an epileptic. The first thing that the people called out of me, and they did not know I was an epileptic, I was taking the dilant and the phenobarb in secret, they called a demon of epilepsy out of me. I have never had a seizure, an epileptic seizure, since then, except when the VA got a court order about a year and a half ago because they were concerned for me and made me take the medicine and I went into seizure and they gave it up. I've never had a seizure and nobody that I've ever called a demon of epilepsy out of has ever had a seizure since as long as they stayed off the medicine. They're not possessed. And I want to add this real quick. Because of the King James Bible, Many places in the New Testament, all demonic activity is called possession. If you'll get yourself a Greek lexicon, you'll, and I think the pastor can verify with me, only two cases in the New Testament use the word that applies to possession. The 16th chapter of Acts and Legion. The others apply to activity, demonic activity in their life. All right? Now, give you an incident. We prayed for a girl when I was here last time. Who was the people, you were upstairs with me, weren't you? Who was the other woman upstairs with us? Is she here? She can testify. The girl could not pray the prayer of salvation till we called certain demons out of her. When we were done praying the prayer of salvation, then we called more out of her. But certain ones had to go before she could even pray. But they had not all gone. If that's a little contrary to you, it's because when you give your heart to the Lord, you give your heart to the Lord. The flesh can still be occupied if you gave them permission to come in your life to do different things. Epilepsy, there's no argument about it. 
That's how Jesus delivered it. And all the dynamics.